felt something crawling up my leg. His entire apartment was infested. I realized that I might lose my life. At 5 a.m. in the morning, I felt something crawling up my leg. It's hard to believe that such a small amount of venom can cause such widespread tissue destruction. My whole leg felt like it was on fire. Once the tissue starts to die, it starts going downhill fast. It was a shock to see this huge deficit in his thigh. I was going to lose the leg. It could spread this destruction throughout the body and be fatal. I realized that I might lose my life. I went to bed around 11 o'clock. My wife was hogging the covers, so I reached down and grabbed some covers off the floor. We had seen some of these spiders in the apartment before. We probably kill one a day, but there wasn't like an overabundance of them. At this point, Dale doesn't realize that his entire apartment was infested with brown recluse spiders. The brown recluse venom is one of the most toxic substances found in nature. The venom is unique. It contains a toxin called sphingomyelin ASD, which causes a whole cascade of inflammation. The amount of venom that the recluse spider actually injects is so tiny, it's hard to even see it with the eye. But the venom is so potent that if the recluse were able to inject the quantity of venom, say, of a rattlesnake, it could spread this destruction throughout the body and almost always be fatal. 5 a.m. in the morning, I felt something crawling up my leg. I wasn't sure what it was, but I felt a small needle prick, just like somebody pinching me. Instinct made me just slap down. I lifted the covers off. I saw a brown spider. It's called the recluse spider because it's typically nocturnal and it comes out at night to hunt. Even though it's a very potent venom, its intent is not to harm humans. I looked down my leg and there was a quarter-sized swelling area. It looked just like a big mosquito bite. Dale doesn't realize that he's been bitten by a poisonous spider. And the venom is causing massive amounts of destruction under his skin. Within four hours, the bite area had grown to about 12 inches in diameter. I started feeling a little nauseous, maybe a little weak, maybe a little tired, but I really didn't think much of it at that time. I woke up the next day and I noticed that the area was a little bit gray. So I went to work and uh, probably shouldn't have. The venom has a spreading factor which works by gravity to spread the toxin under the skin, increasing the area of destruction. I get home and I started feeling a lot of pain in my leg. It felt like a constant stabbing pain in the area where the spider had bitten me. And when my wife came home, I tell her, we need to go to the emergency room. Dale's body is responding by sending white blood cells, immune mediators, basically a cascade of inflammation to combat that foreign substance. And in response, the skin is turning red, getting warm and swollen, and it can be pretty painful. So I drive to the emergency room, and my wife drives another car because she had to work pulled over a couple times because the pain was so bad that I couldn't drive. So I took a little breather and she got out of the car, said, how you doing? I said, I think I can make it the rest of the way. Let's go now. It's hard to believe that such a small amount of venom can cause such massive destruction in the skin. We get to the emergency room. We saw the admitting nurse and she looked at the leg and she's like, well, we need to admit you right away. When Dale came into the ER, he had the classic target lesion. The center was black, purplish, where blood's accumulating, surrounding area of blanched whiteness, and then even further out from there, an area of redness where the inflammation was still going on. The wound doubled in size over the course of two hours. It's unusual for a recluse bite to spread as rapidly as Dale's did. The consulting surgeon thought this could be a flesh-eating bacteria which could spread deep and fast unless stopped surgically. He had no choice but to go in, open the wound, clean out the dead tissue, and hopefully save Dale's leg. I mean, they rolled me in pretty quick because he knew it had to be done quick. And the doctor said, if we don't open it up right now, you're gonna have some permanent damage to that leg.
I woke up the next day and I thought, wow, you know, maybe it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. When they took the bandage off, it was this big open laceration in my leg. It was just very painful. They had to let the toxin kill all the tissue it was possibly going to kill. And I had 105 fever during that whole time. With envenomations, you often see nonspecific flu-like symptoms, like fever. It was just very painful. I was constantly on morphine to deal with it. Dale's condition was getting worse. My body trying to fight off the toxin wasn't working. I was basically losing the battle. The surgeon performed a wound debridement, which is the surgery to remove all of the contaminated tissue. They take me into the surgery room, and I come out, and I feel like a million dollars. Of course, I didn't know what my leg looked like at this time, because they had it covered up. So they roll me in the recovery room, and the nurse is like, well, I'm going to change this bandage. And I'm like, oh, I'm thinking, no big deal. didn't think it was my leg. I thought it was somebody else's. I was amazed. I thought they could save more of the tissue. I thought that it was going to be a little bit of the tissue taken out. I didn't realize they were going to take 12 inches in diameter of tissue out of my leg. These lesions can be more extensive and result in more scarring when the bite occurs in fatty areas of the body, such as the thighs because in fatty areas, there's a great blood supply, and that spreading factor in the venom causes the venom to move farther along and cause more destruction. I could look down into the bowl of my leg and see, like, look like arteries, and every time they took the bandage off, it felt like someone taking masking tape across my nerves. The surgeons didn't do the skin graft immediately because they were concerned the wound was infected, and they didn't want to place the skin graft on potentially infected tissue. Once all the cultures came back negative, the plastic surgeon felt it was then safe to do a skin graft and close the wound. They actually cut skin from the area adjacent to the wound, then they put a piece of gauze on there, and I stayed in a wheelchair. Dale is in the process of having a series of plastic surgery revisions to minimize the size of the scar. I mean, there was going to be a scar there for the rest of my life. There was no way my leg was ever going to look the same again. You know, it's amazing to really think about that we have so much advanced technology in medicine these days that we start to feel invincible, that we're above a lot of things. We have vaccines to prevent disease. And oftentimes with envenomations, we have anti-venom that can stop the process and cure people. It's fascinating that these small creatures with this natural venom can actually kill a man within minutes. 